So software frameworks sometimes allow developers to bind automatically uh, as like you know parameter HTTP parameters with the backend or to the controller. So suppose you have you're using an MVC framework, uh, there is a model view and controller. In the view, you have certain parameters which is can be automatically bind with the backend which is in the controller, and that's where uh, like you know the attacker can use this possibility or or this uh, this bug in the system where they can add an additional parameters and and probably set the values they want it could uh, like you know bypass the input validation as well because the new parameter was not uh, was not expected by the backend uh, but when when it gets it it automatically binds it and and that's what caused the mass assignment vulnerability so uh, today we're gonna look at the demo of like you know what the ma like what the vulnerable code looks like what the fixed code looks like we'll also see a couple of like you know uh, the real world uh, latest scenarios where this vulnerability actually exists and and how do you test it and how do you fix it uh, so please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and let's dig in so this is the code uh, uh, like you know vulnerable code i would say so uh, it's as simple as it, it could get so there's a sign up page uh, it says enter email address you enter the email you enter the password and then you have the submit button now uh, the the uh, the issue he, it's not here like not with the sign up page but the issue is here where the controller uh, so here like you know it's binding the user parameters like accepting via form if you know and then binding it to the backend variables so here it says user is an object email is here password is this now as an attacker if i add this is admin is equal to false uh, the application is not gonna deny me of course this is a parameter in the in the database which is not exposed in the UI, but if I somehow figure it out, there is a parameter or there is a there is this value which is also stored in the database, and if I enumerate and be able to, like you know, do this, then of course I have a big advantage. I can say, yeah, I'm the admin, and and that's where you get the admin access, right? So uh, this is like injected field, right? Uh, this is let's say hidden field uh, which I put it into the sign up or maybe capture with the bulk proxy and I, I inject into the uh, into the form when I'm submitting it, and that's when the uh, issue arises. So as you can see here, I'll of course from false I'll set it true. Now there are two kinds of issue here. One, let's say sometimes applications like you know developers do not realize this is very rare these days, like because in the latest framework you would not see that. But sometimes they do not realize that I can use proxy and I can see all the hidden parameters and they have this hidden parameter which I can obviously change the values to. The second thing is this is not exposed in the hidden parameters either but the name is so obvious in the database like in the user table you have like is admin or, or some kind of uh, uh, parameter or, or some kind of value which is so obvious that i can easily guess and 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 we also have a tool i'll i'll show you uh, how to use that and or maybe how to like you know what the tool is called uh, but usually that's how uh, this vulnerability is exposed now you would think that yeah uh, it's like you know it will only be possible with the uh, like you know old uh, methodology or maybe with the old frameworks but that's not true uh, even the latest softwares like a uh, new relic and and also uh, uber uh, had the same vulnerability uh, very recently so let me actually go to the page where i can show you exactly so this one is the mass assignment vulnerability in partners.ubers.com so here you can see like a driver can change their full name into whatever they want after they accepted into the uber driver program and because like it was not checking uh, the the values provided by the atta attackers or in this case like driver so that there are two possible issues here one during the normal registration for the new users you can put the first name last name and then I can also put like you know some vulnerable like some malicious values some commands and it's stored into the CSV file and when I call someone let's say uber support and they open the CSV file their computer gets infected right uh, the second one is uh, let's say I have like, I have a clean background check and that's why I, wa I was part of the uber uh, driving program now but let's say my uh, my friend who is who was not able to clear the background check I'll just use this vulnerability to mass assign like change the change the values of uh, of his his ID so maybe like you know change his first name last name uh, I guess that's the and yeah and 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 become like you know a part of the uh, driver program so that was the 
a very minor issue now second one in the new relic uh, user can enable api access for free via mass assignment so generally with the new relic uh, api access requires the api key which is come after you pay for that however using the mass assignment uh, and and tool called paraminer i'll show you in a little bit uh, there was a vulnerability in the um, mass assignment so uh, first off like how do you reproduce of course they have it, it has been fixed uh, since then uh, but uh, you go to the account settings and and you go to this particular page and add the following post parameter account allow api access to do so similar to what we did in our example is admissible true so you would believe that oh this is very like old and and maybe 10 years ago no this vulnerability was actually found like found like four years ago and now that's why so even even the new framework will not have this vulnerability but the functions that the framework are using and how you develop or how the developer is building that function might still contain this vulnerability now the interesting point was the paraminer right like this tool was called out and this is actually a I don't know if we have used this in in any of our demonstration, but if not, probably I'll, I'll show you in the future as well. Uh, but this extension actually identifies the hidden unlinked parameters. It's particularly useful for finding web cache parsing vulnerabilities. However, if you have to like you know guess certain parameters on a certain forms, you can. There is so much uh, filtration you can do. Uh, it's very easy to install. Like you have a one click and if you look at the popularity it's pretty much all the way there and the rating is also four and a half stars so the tool is pretty good i have used it a couple of times as well and if you are using a bug pro identifier parameters will be reported as a scanner issues if not you can find them listed under extender extension paraminer and output so that's also good uh, you and once you find let's say an interesting parameter name you can easily uh, try this vulnerability so this is of course part of like you know manual exploitation this is not something uh, most likely the scanner will not be able to find this uh, issue uh, given the complexity of the latest frameworks but yeah uh, whenever you're doing the manual pen testing uh, make sure you do like you know uh, make sure that you're going through this particular thing so uh, the black box testing is this of course when you're doing the white box testing it's pretty much straightforward like you have access to the code you can uh, go and and check like what uh, backend parameters or control parameters that the application is accepting and based on that you can say oh let me try and inject these parameters from the front end and see if it works out uh, so what will be the uh, fixed code look like so the fixed code will be like okay uh, you have the explicit assignment so rather than uh, uh, attacker or user to determine which value to be assigned to which parameter you have explicit uh, determination here uh, password will go user password uh, email will go user email or you can do allow list so only allow uh, user and permit email and password and not the is admin parameter right so that's that's pretty much it um, how you so when you're doing the gray box or white box testing you make sure uh, the developers are following this practice and if you're doing the black box you use the paraminer or maybe your judgment uh, based on the information you have gathered sometimes uh, like you know application throws 500 error messages and in which it throws some parameters which is not supposed to be seen by the user so those are also a good ways to enumerate and, and that's why like you know information gathering has become so important in, in, in the penetration testing uh, so th that's all I wanted to discuss in this video uh, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already I'll, I'll come back uh, next week with the, uh, another interesting topic if you have any comments suggestions please uh, feel free to drop me a comment in here as well and I'll see you guys next week bye bye